Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are so delighted that you welcomed us into your home. We're going to have a great show for you today. We would love to hear from you. So send us your email with your questions or your comments to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. <coughs> well, we're very excited to have with us Dr. Blythe Kaufman. She is an endodontist and a professor of dental medicine. But she is also the founder, and she's been on our show before, of the Children's Rosary, an international prayer movement that has exploded all over the world. Mm -hmm. And she has authored a book entitled, A Soul Prepared Through Suffering. And this beautiful <coughs> book is available at EWTNRC.com. And the scripture verse we'd like to share with you is from Corinthians 12, Verse 10, it says, when I am weak, then I am strong. And that's from 2 Corinthians verse 12, yeah. chapter 12, verse 10, <clears throat> which is true. We are, whether we know it or not, we all are weak, <laughs> but we have a great uh, tendency to rely on ourselves yeah. and muster up our yeah. strength as we do. Yeah. And he says further, uh, St. Paul, for the sake of Christ, then I'm content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecution, calamities. Then you have that verse, when I'm weak, mm. then I'm strong. That, that's a mystery, that is countercultural. In the midst of this culture of death, this throwaway culture, this perfectionistic culture, and it's leading people to, um, mm. we have pain. We, we don't right. deny pain, Christians do not deny pain. Jesus said, you will have tribulation in this world but be of good cheer because I've overcome it. He doesn't deny the fall. Mm -hmm. He came because of the fall, that, that he would unite us to himself and that he would win the victory within us for eternal life where there's no more crying, no more pain, no more sorrow, but that isn't here. That's, That's right. there, but Christ will bring us to that place. So very important, when I'm weak, I'm strong. A soul prepared through suffering. Boy, if we could just get that. Uh, not, I'm happy I'm suffering this, that, or I'm looking for suffering, I'm looking for, no, it's gonna come your way if you're a part of this world. But somehow God's preparing me. Mm -hmm. He's preparing me for something else. He's preparing me for greater faith and to know that he has overcome sickness, pain, suffering, sorrow, every sort of confrontation uh, that's come to us. So a lot to learn in this mystery. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, we're so excited to have with us Dr. Blythe Kaufman. She is an endodontist and a professor of dental medicine, but she is also the founder of the Children's Rosary, an international prayer movement. And she has authored a book entitled A Soul Prepared Through Suffering. And this beautiful book, highly recommended, is available at EWTNRC.com. Well, Blythe, we are excited to have you back. It's been a couple of years yeah. since you were with us. At least us. five years. Yeah, yeah, and you brought your little son, Asher, with you, but now he's taller than all of us. He was. <laughs> he was little. I could still he see him. He was little. I was expecting to see him little, and I, I, I remember him. I might be wrong. Had a nice jacket on, bow tie on. Yeah. He's a little kid. So and she, adorable. He's six foot one. Yeah. He's really coming along, that guy. They in do a lot grow of ways. up. Well, you're the founder of the Children's Rosary, this beautiful apostolate, this movement that has spread throughout the world. So give our family a beautiful update on the Children's Rosary. Oh, thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me on the show. Yes, by the grace of God, the Children's Rosary has spread to so many corners of the world, where I think over 44 countries, uh, we've seen a lot of growth in Ireland. Uh, we were participating in the All-Ireland Rosary uh, Rally, that's held in June. Uh, Archbishop Eamon Martin and Bishop Dome were present. We have seen growth in the UK, also Germany. A lot of people don't expect this, but we've seen a lot of new yeah. groups in Germany. And some of these, these, uh, group, these 
children that come come from 45 minutes away to attend the children's rosary because we're hearing from the parents that they want to have their children pray with other children. They're feeling very isolated in their faith. And so this is great, creating a really great support system for those families, especially in places like Germany. And, uh, but we've, we've also um, just seen growth throughout, throughout the world and even in the United States here at home. So I just got a picture from a new group in Wadsworth, Ohio. They just met on October 5th and they meet on the first Saturday. It's a small mm -hmm. group, so not a big group. These don't have to be really large groups, um, but they're very powerful. Yeah. And just to give you a kind of a sense of the scale of what we're doing, we've sent out about 120,000 handmade rosaries to groups around the world, particularly in Uganda, but also in Nigeria. I think I have a picture of, of the children holding the rosaries from Nigeria, and they're just the faces, the way that yes. that's been transforming it. And we're not just looking out abroad. I mean, we, we've also sent, I think, about 14,000 handmade rosaries to homeschooling families. Mm. And also with information about the children's rosary and that's created more interest and more groups forming here in the U.S. which has really been um, super important. Uh, and on top of the, the, the rosary, we've also had the consecration journey which we've shared right. and now about seven uh, bishops have used it and um, Bishop Donald McGowan from Derry, Ireland is going to be using it um, in January. So that's been a way to support the prayer lives of the children and also it's ended up starting a lot of a lot of new groups um, and the book's been translated now into Dutch. We've just finished the Urdu translation, which is from Pakistan. We've got the um, French translation completed mm. and the Spanish is available through EWTN Re yeah. Religious Catalog. So. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, I, I could remember <laughs> going through EWTN and just looking over things and it's suddenly coming uh, upon the children's yeah. rosary. And mm -hmm. you know, I didn't even know it was a show or what was happening. And you know, a little child shall lead them and just there, they're not perfect, but their purity, their simplicity, actually leading this, their intercessory prayer, praying with Our Lady, so powerful, and becoming disciples mm. yep. through this. And you mentioned Germany and other places, you know, in Europe and so on. Just how important, you know, this all is and how God will, is really answering their intercessions, their prayers, Our Lady's prayers. And this is a, a very important work for the renewal of the church and awakening in countries. Absolutely. So tell us about this new book, A Soul Prepared Through Suffering. Last time you were here, we spoke about the book Consecration, Children's mm -hmm. Consecration. Where does this fit in with that book? Yeah, so I think it really builds <clears throat> beautifully. First of all, these books I really feel are a fruit of the children's rosary. So I think there's just so much grace flowing yeah. from the children's prayers and that this is really manifested through these books that are coming. They're essentially a series of retreats. So the first one is a 33-day consecration to Jesus through Mary in the spirit of St. Therese, the little flower. And essentially that journey is giving everything we have to Jesus through our Blessed Mother and also asking her to put us under her protection because she never forces her help. Mm. So that's the first stage. The second stage, which is this book, is now helping our Blessed Mother, helping our Lord through uniting <coughs> our mm -hmm. suffering through the suffering of Christ. And I think it was in um, chapter 20, or day 26 of the journey when St. John Paul II um, mentions um, from his life, Pope St. John Paul experienced great suffering in his life, especially during his, apon apost or his pontificate. Rather, yeah. He acknowledged that his office brought with it thorns and crosses that often remain hidden in the secrecy of the heart. But these sufferings are the guarantee of fruitfulness of an apostolate that with God's help will produce abundant results. And so I think this is making what we try to do fruitful as our suffering. Mm -hmm. So in this book, in this beautiful book, your approach to the topic of suffering is different from other authors. So explain to our family what you did differently in this beautiful book. Well, through this, my, <clears throat> my own journey with suffering, I yeah. found that our Lord really helped me to grow in simplicity. He just stripped away all of those things. And so through my, my journey, he really began to open up, showing me how things that were in my life would start to unpack a lot of spiritual mystery, so to speak, and one of those was suffering, and that was became really an instrument of my conversion and deepening of my faith, but he showed me how things around us, uh, such as in, in this particular book, it opens with an allegory of a fire, and how the fire can really represent us being the wood being consumed by the love of Christ, and there's so many different aspects of the wood, how we're prepared, the fact that 
first uh, we have to be split open and then and seasoned. And what is that seasoning? And so the, the splitting open is our surrender and the seasoning that occurs and, and so forth. So it, it allows people, adults, particular I was thinking of an adult audience, but also young people to be able to go through this journey and understand the purpose of suffering. Yeah, and to make it applicable but transformative in your life because you just don't want to suffer for suffer's sake, right? You want to suffer that, and we've had our own share of suffering, and my heart cry was, Lord, I want to suffer well. Like, I don't want to miss this opportunity. Go for the gold inside of me, Jesus. So whatever you got to burn and all the dross has to come up, bring it on. Because don't, you don't want it to be lifelong, although some sufferings are lifelong. Um, Mine was uh, a cancer journey with chemo for six months, but then there was a cure at the end, right? Some other people, right, go through suffering that is lifelong. And so there's daily suffering, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, um, psychological, people go through different kinds of suffering. But to have and build that intimacy with Jesus in the midst of it and to keep our eyes and to and to bring out the purpose from it. So share with our family in this beautiful and you you did this so well and it's a daily journal part that you do mm -hmm. where they go through the beauty in in a simple way but a deep deep way. That Exactly. I I think that suffering is so misunderstood today that there's such an opportunity really for people to understand how this can, there's so many levels of protection that you can get. Also, there's this, you know, you're called to pray with the heart, but how do you do that? Mm. Once you start suffering, it's hard not to pray with the heart. And also our Lord calls us every day. He calls our name. He calls us to be close to him. Do we hear the call? Do we respond to the call or do we even hear the call? Mm. Because it's so noisy, it's so busy. And so suffering just kind of strips away all of that and it, and it slows you down in most cases, mostly slows you down. And, and so in that time, you begin to hear the call. And you've also, you know, you're, you're seeking what is the meaning of it and, and it often this draws us closer to a relationship with our Lord. So it's, it comes out of love. Mm -hmm. And I think once we really understand that this, that the, this is something, a relationship with our Lord that he's using and he himself has shown through his love, his suffering on the cross, that that's how he, he's showing it to us. It's a relationship. And so we're beginning to, to unite our suffering to Christ and we can then start to accomplish things together. And that's when you really start to get excited um, because you see what we can do together mm -hmm. and that this has a purpose and, um, and how good things come from the suffering. And a lot of it, people who have suffered can look back and say, I see the fruits, I see mm -hmm. the beauty that in my mm -hmm. relationship with people, in my own spiritual life, they see that. And so they know it's true. Right. But, but our flesh <coughs> in and of our person, we want to repel it, right? Or we want to medicate it. Uh, we don't want pain. We don't, we don't want to feel uncomfortable. We don't want to feel out of control. And, and sometimes when people are suffering, you know, they curse God. Why me, Lord? Why does this have to happen to me? And really in our life, in our journey, we don't get to pick out our cross. We have to take up our cross. And all of us have crosses. I mean, every human being does. But it's, it's to be transformative in the depths of our soul if we let it. So it really is an attitude of the heart, how we begin, or sometimes he captures us in the middle of the journey. Like we wasted three months when we could have been doing something else with this, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it actually, time, it's, it's, it's interesting how suffering crystallizes time. Uh, so, so often you, you'll be getting ready for a party and time flies by, but then I don't know if you've also experienced when you're suffering, one minute can hold on what seems like an mm. hour. And so our Lord opens up this idea of time and how precious it is and how it, it can change, the nature of it can change. So he, he really unpacks a lot of different things that are even beyond our understanding. Uh, he starts to give us a, a glimpse of, of what that time means and making good use of it. And sometimes having that suffering early in life uh, is a treasure. Mm -hmm. mm. Lessons learned early on. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking about, you know, the different levels of happiness that we hear being taught. And, and I think, you know, all of that gets broken down. You know, my ego gratification, 
by helping other people, gratification, you know, by comparing myself to other people. And that's, that's, that's just going away. That's being stripped away. And that's a really frightening place because it's really taking you to the end of what it's going to be of your life, which is you're going to be reduced. You're not going to be helping other people. You're not going to be getting your next uh, you know, diploma. You're not going to be doing this. And, and we, not that that's all bad, because we want to be excellent in what we do. We want to be good stewards of what we do. But in the end, what will you do when the end comes, when you're reduced to it's just me and you, God and you, looking at one another? And that, to me, seems to be what suffering does and pain does and, and uh, infidelity pain or the pain that I've inflicted on somebody else. I'm in pain now because I'm realizing that. How do, I, how do I work this through and all the good things that I've done, but I've still done this and I know this. I'm just saying, it, it, it's, you, you, feel very, you feel naked, <laughs> I, I would think. You know, before God, nothing's working here to bring me peace or to resolve this. And I think we should, as much as we can, fight against sickness and illness. You know, the Lord wants us to receive all the healing that we can. But sometimes it's prolonged, sometimes it does not change, sometimes it is unto death. It's a scary place to be, I would think. You went through that in your own story. I know we're going to get into your story more fully, but you know, for you it was kind of a sequential stage-by-stage -stage thing, and you had your own stuff to take control of things. You know, I'm going to take control right. of things. It's a natural thing, and mm -hmm. you find that again and again and again until you like, just kind of beat up, and I, I can't do this. There's a lot of people stuck there. A lot of people hurt, a lot of people in fear. And say, I don't get this. I don't like this. <laughs> a absolutely, absolutely. I mean, my, my upbringing was one, I came from a single parent, so I always I saw my mom struggling and to, to provide for us, and I, and I just thought, I've got to stand on my own two feet. And so that went right. really deep. Mm -hmm. And so I became a dentist and an endodontist, and I really saw, I need to be able to provide for myself. And so when that started to get stripped away, when I ended up being diagnosed with a genetic condition, that started to get stripped away. It was, I was embarrassed. I was uh, just very concerned with what people thought of me. And there was a lot of work to be done. I mean, I had a lot of pride. And so I think, how does our Lord gonna really work that out? Yeah. And, and I'm not sure how he could have done it without suffering as his tool. And that was the tool he used in me. And, and that was, and ended up being a very good one. Mm -hmm. And I fought it. And maybe if I hadn't fought it so long, you know, trying to do my own will and take control of the illness and figure it out, I might not have been brought so low, but, um, but He's, you know, obviously he had this mission of the children's origin. I think he has a mission in, in everyone's life. Mm -hmm. And he wants to see us, and when we stand before our Lord, we want to be, yes, you're a good and faithful servant. You know, you've, you've accomplished what I, we were put for, here for. And so that's what I really hope in my time as I stand. I've achieved what I was put here to do. Yeah. And the suffering will make, and I think the suffering is really what helps us to get there. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break at this yeah. point and hold you over for the final segment. And I uh, hope that you all are getting some instruction here, a soul prepared through suffering, how the Lord can use suffering in our lives to perfect us, to prepare us for the high calling that he gives to us to participate with Jesus Christ in his suffering and to be a blessing to him and to the world. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, we're going to finish up our conversation with Dr. Blythe Kaufman. Well, you, you talk about in the book, this book being timely, <clears throat> because so many people have described this generation in which we are right now is a very anxious generation. So why do you think your book on suffering is so timely for them now? Well, I think all of us experience being, being with friends and talking and finding out that someone in their family is suffering or their children are in therapy, they're anxious, they've come through the pandemic, they've, they've been through a lot and there's a lot of strain that technology puts on our children um, and opens them up to things that make them grow older faster than they should be. And so that brings with it a lot of anxiety and suffering yeah. and this, what do I do with it? Mm. And so I think this book 
is an opportunity for people to just do a 40-day retreat. And they can start it at any time. It might lend itself what, nicely to Lent. But if you're in the, in the midst of suffering, just pick it up and start it. And it's a five to 10 minute commitment a day. And you create a, a consistency of prayer and you start to do, dig into what does this mean? Because if you don't have, if you can't find meaning in it, mm -hmm. suffering brings you to a dark place. Mm -hmm. And the fruits of that aren't necessarily good. Mm -hmm. And so, but if you start to understand where this is calling you to and that there's actually love behind it, you can have a lot of joy, even in the midst of suffering. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hopeful, I'm really hopeful that this book will be able to open up some, bring some peace to people and some joy into really dark, a, a time that has really been pervaded with a lot of darkness. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited to see um, where this goes, and yeah. I'm really grateful for you to give myself the opportunity to present it to people. Mm -hmm, absolutely, and, and they, the chapters are really short, but they're really meaningful. You have a goal for each one of them, a prayer each day, and like we said, you know, back uh, in the green room, when you're in pain and you're in suffering, you, know, you could barely read or, or mm -hmm. do whatever, but there's just enough here that you could do that and get great benefit, and I think whole families can do this together, absolutely. even with one person that's suffering in particular, it's impacting the whole family. Yes. And they could do this retreat for 40 days. So we thank God you're gonna be with us again tomorrow to unpack this more fully. Again, a soul prepared through suffering, a soul prepared through suffering, EWTNRC.com. She was sharing about anxiety. If you have anxiety of any kind, especially young people, it's painful. It really is a suffering. Jesus said, have no anxiety about anything, but in everything, with prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, make your request known to God, and then mm. that the peace of God, which passes understanding, will bless your mind and your heart in Christ Jesus, mm. the Lord. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now. <laughs>